Hello everyone, welcome to Titan Web Tutorials. In this tutorial, we will configure a smart B on, on a Titan Web project. Here is my uh, demo Titan Web project. We have like a sample website for a coffee shop, for a coffee shop. And um, we have like some lead, uh, lead form to create leads. And we have a few pages here, um, customer service page, product catalog page. Um, let me show you the live version real quick. So if I click on product catalog, pulls in data from Salesforce, brings me some product, and I can uh, see more details, and then I can click on a button to buy now. Um, let me take you to the customer service page. Here I can see cases and all that fun stuff. And obviously you can do a lot more than this. This is just a real quick demo. Um, what we want to achieve here is we want to add a smart V. Smart V is a smart validation uh, using Salesforce. So basically you can authenticate any object in Salesforce and uh, using a one-time password or without. It's up to you to configure it. Um, and I'll show you how you can uh, achieve it with the Titan Web project. All right, so uh, let's head over to the project settings. We'll take a look at the user access. We have a bunch of options here. We will start with a smart V. We're going to hit configure and the first thing it asks you is what is the object in Salesforce that you would like to authenticate your users with. In our instance it will be a contact and again you can do it with any object in your system. So what we want to do is give the uh, smart V the email for the, the email field that we want to authenticate from the contact and in our instance is just the email field. and um, and the value for it to store. So the smart V will store the contact ID value so we can use it later on. We wanna do queries based on this and it's very important. Our next uh, screen is condition. So you can add a condition saying, listen, only authenticate contacts that are within certain account. Or if you have record type on your object, you can say only these uh, contacts or any other object from that record type are allowed to go in. So, and you can do anything here. You can say like the last name ends with ABC, only they're allowed to log in. So you can go wild with these conditions. They're very, very useful. Uh, <clears throat> the third screen is authentication, where you can decide if you want to use two-factor authentic authentication or not. Since it's recommended, so we will turn it on. And then basically the only thing you gotta configure is you gotta give Titan a text field of at least, uh, I think five or six characters in Salesforce, a custom field to where to store the, the one-time password. So in my instance, it looks like this. I have a, the, in the contact object, I have a custom field, custom text field um, named smart V. And this is where I would like Form Titan to save my one type password. All right, I'll hit next. And now you can configure basically uh, custom pages on your website for um, two things, the profile page and registration page. The profile page, what it will give you is, it will give you a user once it's logged in to see data from the object that you uh, configure the Smart V on to see his data live. And you can decide whatever you want to show. So right now I just selected, let me get rid of this and I'll configure this from the beginning. So we'll add three fields and I want to show my user his first name, his last name, his email, and we can add his phone number as well. So let's do business phone. And you can uh, control the label. And afterwards, we will do a separate video for it. You can uh, like style the page however you like. And I'll hit next. And the registration, basically what it gives you a way for your users, whoever your, in our instance, a contact, if, if doesn't exist in Salesforce, you can let him register by himself without having to go through uh, someone from Salesforce from within that has access to your Salesforce organization adding the contact beforehand. So if you allow this, users, whoever comes into your website will be able to register on his own. So in my instance, I've allowed it and I've added two fields here. So 
we added the email, it's, you can see it's required and the username is required. And you can do this for any object in Salesforce as well. So whatever object you configure is Smart V, of course. So we'll hit next. And our third screen is parameters. You can add parameters from the contact object that you just authenticated. You can grab that directly from the, the Smart V and assign it onto a parameter. So let's say if you want to save the, the contact ID, which, which I've done right now, and I've assigned it to our contact ID from Smart V. So that's wonderful. And you can create another one and say, just for, for the fun, the contact name. It doesn't make any sense to save the contact name in a parameter, but that's uh, just, for the, just for the demonstration, we'll do it. And I'll hit generate. And I'll save my project. And now it's, it's a very, very cool feature and very important thing to understand. Once I've added the Smart V, you can control which on each page you have on your project, which one requires a login, which one requires a Smart V and others that are public. So let's say for our homepage, if I'll click the three dots, dots, the settings for the page, I can see that I have the access settings. So if I set it to inherit from project, that means it will be required to log in. So let me just refresh this right now before I save it and I'll show you. Let's go to my, my homepage and right now it's public. Once I will set inherit from project and I'll save this. And now once I go to my homepage and I'll refresh again, I'll be required to log in. Wonderful. So let's uh, put it back to public so we can access the homepage and let's just uh, have a little brief. So a product catalog is publicly accessible, customer service inherit from project, create a case inherit from project as well. All right, this is what we care about now, just for this demo, uh, we'll save this. Let's refresh and I'll head over to my homepage. All right, so we're at the homepage, it's public, product catalog, public as well. Once we try and access the customer service, we're required to log in. All right, so let's log in with, a, with the contact we have in the system. So cdo.formtitan.com, we'll continue. And let's get the 2FA. So I just got that over in my email, I'll log in. And here it is. Now what we will do is we'll use the contact ID that we received to pull in the cases that only uh, that are only for this contact. And we'll create a new case. You also can push it with that contact so you will know that that smart view authenticated user created the case or um, assigned to a case and you can pull it back or you can pull back relevant information just for that authenticated smart view user. Uh, you can do a lot more than than, uh, than this. It's just a simple demonstration of its power. All right. Uh, what you will see on the right side, this is Titan. If I'll click on the profile, this is the profile page we set up before. So you can, uh, the, the user now can see his first name, his last name, his business phone, his email, and it can update the profile directly from here. Uh, this is really cool. And the registration page, I'll show you real quick. So if I'll head over to the sign in and you don't have an email, so let's say I'll put something here that is surely not in my Salesforce, then it will give you an invalid email address. And obviously you can override all these, uh, all these messages and the way that this page looks as well. Um, so what, since we enable registration, the user will be able to just sign up. So I'll do CDO three. and do CDO and I'll hit continue. And now if I'll try login with CDO plus three and I'll hit continue, it will log me in once I get the one-time password. 
All right, so I got the password and I'll log in. And let me show you what it did behind the scenes. It basically went to Salesforce and created a contact for you um, with the email and name that you provided. And again, you can add more fields to the registration screen. You can um, control it however you like. So this is great. Now let me show you how you can use the Smart V um, information we have. All right, um, so what we will do here is we will navigate to the um, create case page first. And we have here a form with, uh, that collects some case data, so subject, priority, some information on the case. Um, and what we will do here is assign it to that authenticated contact, uh, smart way contact. So we'll head over to interactivity and I'll click on configure submit action. And let's take a look at the Salesforce action. So we're running first, uh, create a new case in Salesforce, and then we're updating the table to show the latest case that was added. So what I will do, I'll click configure a uh, Salesforce integration. I'll head over to the push um, to our case. We'll edit the mapping. So this is just a simple create and we'll head over to the contact ID. That's the first one. And what we want to do is map to smart V ID. The smart V ID holds our contact ID that we set it up to be the ID of the smart V. Or you can use, we also set up a custom parameter just to show you, you can do that as well. You can use your custom parameters, but and whenever you use the ID of the authenticated object, you can just go to the smart V ID. All right, so this will tell us that the contact ID that um, created the case is our SmartV user. That's great. Now what we want to do is we want to head over to our get, and first of all, to our update cases get, and we'll edit this as well, and we'll add a condition saying that the contact ID on the case equals our smart V our smart V ID. Wonderful. We'll apply this and let's also fix our customer support table. And we can change this to auto trigger and we'll head over to the condition and we'll say contact ID on the case equals our smart V ID. That's great. We'll hit apply and we'll close and let's see it in action. All right, so I saved the project. Let's uh, head over to the published site. All right, let's refresh it and we will head over to our customer service. Let's log in. And I'm just going to wait for the password one second. All right, it's here. And I'll put it in here and we're logged in. Um, immediately, you can see we have a lot less cases than what we've seen before. And the reason for this is that these cases are assigned to my contact. So if I'll head over to the case, I can see that the contact name is Chief Donkey, which is the authenticated user right now. Um, if I'll click on the create a case and I'll do CDO, let's uh, put a priority to low, case type electrical, CDO at forntitan.com. And again, you can control whatever fields you want to push into the case. Um, description, and I'll select a product. I'll hit a, I'll hit the save button, and here is my case. And if I'll head over here, let's head over to Salesforce and I'll click integration logs, we can see that our case was created successfully. If I'll click the ID, it will take me um, to Salesforce to that case we just created. And this is how you add the SmartV to your Titan web project.